Hello, this is SRJ. We are going to look at Maya animation interface. What is that? Basically, this is what you need to know before starting any animation in Maya. And if you are new and you don't know much about Maya, you have been doing some modeling, you have spent some time with Maya, you know a little bit, you can start your animation. If you are not very good, I recommend you to spend some time with the Maya, especially the camera movement, the interface and little bit of modeling so you get used to the Maya and come back again. So let's get started. The first thing is your tools. What you are going to use? Move tool, rotate tool, still scale tool. These are the most common tools you are going to use for your entire life if you are going to be an animator. Yes, a lot of them. So, let's start. First is move tool. You press W, you get the move tool. What does what it does? It move. What's the second tool? Rotate tool. You need to press E for the rotate, press W for the move, R for the scale. What does the rotate tool do? do? It rotates. Next is scale. As it name says, it scales. So the next thing is range slider, sorry, time slider. So here's the number you see. This represents your time. But what, uh, what it does, it keeps all the information of your animation with respect to the time. So after introducing the next thing, how to animate, just let's do some basic. So you need to press key s so there are some values you press s so what does do s s locks your values on particular time so now you can see there is a red thing if i do undo um, another most important tool undo this is where you find your undo shortcut is control z so what it does it goes back almost everybody know about undo it present in most of the software you can even do in windows so if i press key here it locks the value if i go somewhere ahead in the time the 30 is selected we are at 30 i'll move it i'll move it and press s key you can see again there is a red and there is a red key again if i drag between these two you can see the animation i'll just press undo now there is no key if I just drag and won't press S even if I change my time nothing happens also people do a mistake people press key S and they are still at the same time they are not changing the time well if you move that nothing happens I move I press key it stays there because the time was same I lock the key and again I change the position and I key again it changes its initial value it's override the older value so you need to change your time to see the animation actually let's move to the next thing next thing is range slider so this is our time and this is what decides how many frames so how many frames will your scene keep so it's 120 1 to 120 what's this 200 there is a box if I click and drag it drags till the 200 so this is what decides how many number of frames your scene will have you can have 500 you can have 1000 you can have 2000 or you can just have 5 frames so depending how big your scene how much you need to work at a time you can decide I need 5 frame I'll do 5 I need 50 frames I'll do 50 I need to start from 25 to 50 sorry 25 to 50 so you can see this is easy to work and focus at particular time of animation let's move ahead next is your timing playback speed okay so this is 24 fps so there are several types of requirement 
for production like if you go to broadcast you might need a different frame range different type of broadcast support different frame range frame rate sorry so like uh, there are some who does uh, 24 some does 30 and what are the common so the commons are 12 24 25 and 30 these are the most common you have to do something in between that so let's stay with 24 default there is a play button if you play you see your animation this is nice sorry your time is moving but there is no animation I'll just do it again I'll move and press key so now I can see the animation it's happening this is my playback speed this is by default if I do right click and go to playback speed this is real time selected but it's going to be play every frame free this is going to be your default this is how you're going to see okay so you make sure change this playback speed back to real time when you do that then you will see it properly now it's playing 24 fps if I increase 60 fps what happened the number of frame increases and I don't know if I'm recording at that speed but the animation gets smoother because there are more frames in the same time range you see things more smoothing so it's depend upon your scene let's get back to the 24 okay what is next next is graph editor this is the very important thing what you're going to need you're going to use most of your time windows animation editor and there it is graph editor i click it a window pops up what does it do let's make it bigger so going from left to right it tells the time so you can see one two three four five six what time time represents by frame and 24 frame is one second we decided here we can change it it's variable and from bottom to top represents the distance the space so here is zero as it go above you can see more values what you can do with the graph the graph decide what kind of motion you have between these two points so it can be anything it can be fast it can be slow and or you can even change the position from here we can even change the timing from here so there are lots of things can be done with the graph just by changing it the type of motion changes just for example I do this and check the animation there is going to be a slight difference I don't know if you can notice this if I just change the graph type if you can't notice it it's okay but there is a slight difference but when there is a bigger scene it matters and for property and other stuff so let's move to the next workspace what is the workspace this is your workspace where you work everything tools and your layout everything is in your workspace comes under your workspace so this is your workspace here you can see Maya class if you click it you will see a lot of options so what are we going to do animation so we can try animation as, as I click in animation you see you got your graph editor if you hold your cursor at the line you get a different icon and if you click and drag you can make it bigger this is how you can decide how to work it depends if you need your graph if you don't need if you don't need you can see it here you click here and your graph disappears so it went nowhere it's just here graph editor you click your graph will appear there is another time editor this is for later we leave that we'll stick with the graph editor okay now there is another tool top set so these are two very basic tool again windows animation editor I click to dope set yes 
here it comes what does it represent it represents only time and keys so you can see there are two black thing as you select it gets yellow and you can move it by middle mouse button left click to select and middle mouse to move left click to select middle mouse to move so as I s changing here you can see the time is changing so it went beyond the zero value so let's move it forward so you can see it's from 4 to 24 it was initially 1 so let's close it there is another shortcut the third option is dope sheet if I click it I get the dope sheet here again if I click it here it switch back to time editor I go to graph editor so you can do this here if you go to time editor open graph editor oh no there is no option for dope sheet basically the time editor closes so you can switch between dope sheet and graph editor it's optional mm, so we are pretty much done last thing you need to know save your file just save it you go save scene you must already know these stuff this is just the basic and just a heads up for the one who just is getting started and really don't want to get into the modeling and other technical stuff so as you go to your save as you a window pop up my computer click it where you want to save choose your destination projects save file so I just saved it there is another thing auto save why is that because it's very important your file crashes your file can corrupt your power can go you can hit your cable your dog can tangle between your cable your cat can press escape you can press you can mistakenly close your system file can crash anything can happen so auto saves comes handy in that so what is that how it works you go to window setting and preferences you go to preferences if you drag down the preferences you go to file and projects and there you see your option enable sorry auto save you go you check box enable as you check box you see interval minutes 10 so basically in ever every 10 minute it's going to save your file yes you make sure to save and make sure to click on save preferences okay so what it does it saves your file in every 10 minutes where that file goes it doesn't go for your files it goes in the default project folder what is that it's document Maya projects default and there is your folder autosave make sure to remember it so this is where your all files will go all the autosave for the weeks make sure to keep cleaning it's gonna create a lot of space it's gonna take a lot of time but trust me this is going to be a life saving thing your file might crash you might just overwrite your file you might just delete your file in the beginning these things happen so this will be your life saver ok guys thank you for joining I'll be doing more animation tutorials now on let's see you then thank you